Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers, sisters, and friends. Hope you're well, hope you're good. It's Brother Naseem Khan joining you on another show in the limelight, this time with another special guest. So, before we bring that special guest on, I'm just gonna show you a little video. So there you have it guys, there you have it, Shaheen Badr is who we're going to speak to today. She's a multi-talented artist and uh, hails from, uh, originally from down south and she's in India at this moment in time. So without further ado, I think we should give it a call. Assalamualaikum Shaheen, it's Naseem from the UK in the limelight. How are you? Hi, Waalaikum Asalaam. I'm fine. Can you hear me clearly? Absolutely, absolutely we can hear you. Yeah. How are you? How's your day going? How was your Eid, Eid Mubarak? Yeah. Oh, Eid Mubarak. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Eid has been really amazing. So I had, uh, well, not that amazing really because I'm away from my family, but yeah. um, I sort of managed to to sort of appreciate the day uh, with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa So I guess that's, that's the way I would like to put it right Ma now. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. So Shaheen, let's get straight into it, yeah? yeah. How, how did you uh, come about being the artist that you are? How did it start for you? I actually, uh, basically, um, I was obviously brought up in Kuwait and um, I started music there really. My mother was a classical uh, sort of uh, trained singer. Right. So Alhamdulillah, I sort of adapted her ways and her style, etc. And uh, then we sort of moved to England and I think that's when it sort of started happening for me there. I was brought up in, I mean, I was born in England anyway. Yeah, um, so, you know, that's how the whole thing sort of started for me. I started sort of listening to a lot of different uh, sorts of uh, genres of music, um, you know, sort of the folk music, the traditional music. All, you know, it was all combined. Um, um, the Hindi, there was obviously the, uh, we listened to the top 10 sort of pop sort of music uh, as well, yeah. uh, the Arabic dance music. So I think all of this was sort of um, incorporated um, in my style. I think that, that's how it all started for me. Um, I started to do a lot of gigs as well in London, yeah. um, a lot of events. Um, and, um, you know, uh, just for fun. And, uh, people from the radio station. So when I came to UK, a lot of uh, people started to pick me up and uh, they, the producers wanted to uh, introduce me on the channels, on the Pakistani channels as well, the Gori, the Indian channels. So I think that sort of grew. Um, I was pretty shy in that sort of area, but then that sort of built up my confidence um, in sort of moving forward really. So it just sort of happened as well as the right space, the right time really. <laughs> That's, fant yeah, that's fantastic, sister. And also, your heritage from your background comes from a Muslim yeah. back, from your Muslim background as well. So obviously, how did you incorporate it to two? Did, did you give get any negatives as long as uh, as well as your positives? Oh, um, gosh, that's that's going to be obviously it's pretty deep that subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, very deep indeed. Um, Alhamdulillah, to be very honest with you, Bob, uh, you see, from, uh, from childhood, I think I was a very spiritual uh, person. Alhamdulillah, I used to keep up with my prayers. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like, you know, like you just when I was watching Kuwait as well, even there, I was pretty spiritual. So, um, 
yes, of course, uh, there, there, were, there were a few dilemmas that I had to sort of face when I started because my genre was different. I was listening to Big B, Techno, Electro House. Absolutely. Hello, Shane, are you there? Hello, Shane. And all the sort of music. So obviously you'd, you'd get a little bit flat from, yeah, you would get flat. And I'm a woman at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, can, can you hear me? I can hear you now. You cut off earlier. I think just stay to where can you were. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. Yeah, okay, so sorry, because we're obviously... You can hear me now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, um, okay, you can hear me now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it okay now? Yeah, perfect, sis, perfect. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, obviously, what had, um, what had sort of happened, of course, um, you would get people um, that uh, sort of love you for what you're doing, and then you get people who oppose you because they believe that you're spiritual, and then if you are, then you shouldn't be doing music. You know, it's that yeah, kind of yeah. thing. So I always, uh, to be honest with you, bro, I always, alhamdulillah, believe, um, I, you know, I, I sort of balanced my life. You know, I yeah. obviously took the flag as it would come, uh, but then I I knew what my ability was and who I was as a human being. So I yeah. didn't allow the judgments of others affect my life. I was brought up, um, alhamdulillah, in a very stable, alhamdulillah, good family. My parents are sort of uh, liberal, yet they're religious, yet they're traditional. They are, they've been brought up, they're educated. So I think it, all of that really helped me to be, uh, uh, you know, helped me to be who I am, really. And then... Um, I was traveling a lot as well, and we come from a multicultural family. So I think all these things uh, played a very important part in my life. And, um, uh, you know, I, I, find, I found, excuse me, I found that people were far more traditional around uh, when I started with music than how they are right now. They are far more adapt adaptable. And as a mature woman, when I speak to the brothers, when I speak to people who are full of knowledge, they are much other so accepting and they're loving and they appreciate the fact more than anything that I'm in faith. And I think this is very important to me. Absolutely. It's very important to be, um, you know, sort of accepted in that sort of realm. And of course, there are, you know, I first have to congratulate you for what you're doing. And I, I, I'm so proud of you that you took the time out to actually call me, um, you know, and make the time for me because I also know that there are some channels um, that believe in maybe uh, promoting machines, uh, promoting XYZ, but yeah. then they do not promote artists, etc., even women who, yeah, yeah. who do uh, the kind of genres of music that I do. Yeah. And, um, you know, Alhamdulillah, crossed over around the world. So sometimes, you know, those kinds of things are, I believe, that people need to sort of change their perspective um, and not sort of condemn an, uh, a human being for being art oriented uh, uh, person. You see what I mean? Absolutely. And um, I love everybody. I love people. I love communities. I love all sorts of things. I love everybody. So for me, as an artist, I feel fulfilled uh, uh, with the Rahma of Allah, subhanAllah, with the Rahma of, especially with Ma. And I think this is what's really important for us to understand, uh, well, that um, when you start sort of mocking and criticizing and condemning uh, yeah. human life, um, without understanding the person's perspective, individuals, etc., then it then itself, in itself, it actually um, becomes uh, a force, and a lot of people that is not appreciated, like a that's one that I said, I do not, uh, I do not appreciate transgressors. I do not uh, appreciate zalimun. You know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has the zalimun. So it's one of those things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is merciful. So we have to understand as individuals that if we, if we start um, uh, putting too much of control over 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 things which are, you know, let's say a woman is modest and then yet do not uh, think appreciate her, but then you appreciate somebody. Um, you would look at to be uh, looking at and expect her to I believe her to be perfect but then yeah. Allah subhanahu wa also loves imperfection because that gives you time to actually uh, prostrate to him and see forgiveness and Allah loves people who are uh, 
are patient and who seek forgiveness all the time, you know, because if we were perfect, um, bro, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If we were perfect, then we wouldn't be seeking forgiveness. Absolutely. Do you see what I mean? It's Absolutely. Logic. We would never. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. And it's, it's one of those... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the whole point because at the end of the day, we shouldn't judge anybody. That's number one. And number two is between you and Allah. No. Allah, and Allah. Yeah, absolutely. Of course it is. It's very important. Yeah. I think that because of the kind of genre of music um, that I have been doing, um, you know, um, there are loads of people, you know, they probably look at me and they probably say, oh, she, she uh, you know, she's also about uh, faith and yeah. um why hasn't she given up news? Why yeah. isn't she doing it? No, but nobody has right to implement yeah, yeah. those sort of rules upon myself because yeah. I have um, I've been brought up in the UK. I have yeah. mingled with all sorts of people. Um, like I was telling you, bro, that there are brothers who come out of faith. You know, I had to basically um, invite them back into faith because they yeah. found it very difficult. That I, I remember one day um, I was buying uh, some other. You know, I was buying uh, a fragrance, yeah, really beautiful looking um, scent, and yeah. And I'm in the shop, and I'm just walking on. I was wearing my jeans, I was wearing my long top, and you know, I just I was just like walking on with my handbag, and this man just walked in, and um, this was in East London. And he just, he just walked in with his fist. He said, um, I was really shocked. He sat down. He said, oh, sorry, first he sat down. And I was yeah. in the opposite direction. And he just started talking to me. And when he started talking to me, he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you know, sis, I, I don't know whether I should change my image. And he was wearing the cap and he's a Muslim brother. Yeah. And I looked at him. And he just started talking to me. Yeah. And I, I was like, uh, okay. And um, he said, I said, I don't know if I should change my image. And I said, why, bro? I said, what's wrong with the image? And he was wearing this dark shirt, wearing the Arabic costume, wearing his, um, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, his hat as well. You know, the, the Salah hat. He's wearing that, uh, 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 thing. Uh, topi, topi, topi. Yeah. yeah, he's wearing that. And, uh, uh, yeah, he had a beard, yeah. uh, his mustache, his mashallah, well groomed, he looked fine. And his eyes were pretty dark, like pretty dark around the eye area. So yeah. I said, you know, bro, are you all right? And he said, yes, I am. But he said, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, people judge me. People judge me on the street because of this Arabic um, outfit. And do you think it's wrong? I said, why? I said, you look perfect to me. And yeah. he said, this is your faith. Allah has given you this. Uh, you know, you, if you are happy within it, and you, and for him to say this to me and see me, yeah. It was very painful. Absolutely. I swear to you, I sat and with him for one. I discussed it with him, and I be, and he said, "I don't know if I should trim my beard. I, sh I don't know whether I should come out of this religion." And I, and I literally no, had I said, "I couldn't believe that he was yeah. actually saying this to me out of the blue." And then I sat down with him, discussed it with him. Um, it took me over an hour, and you know, I swear to you, he just left it when we had this conversation. Yeah. Putting him back into faith, saying so many things, Jeff Hunter was discussed right now. When I came out, um, when he went out of the door, just before he went out, um, he bowed to me, he just took a bow, and he said, Jazakallah khair, sister, I really need really this today. So only God knows what's going on. Absolutely, yeah, and you were there, you were there, there. So you, were, you were chosen to be there at we the don't right know time. Everything. You see what I'm trying to say, bro? Um, and I think a lot of our brothers are sort of, I believe that they are suffering. I think a lot of our brothers, you know, sometimes who I have come across, they are fighting through a lot of depression and uh, lot, lots of things, you know, lots of things that I've experienced personally yeah. myself. And as a woman's sister, I feel very protected towards them. All the, you know, I think you see all the men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really strange. But because I've, I've been liaising with a lot of men in my history, yeah. and I've lost a lot of people as well in my life, my brothers, or my friends, my colleagues, etc. mainly they've been men. And I think, um, of course, my relatives, uh, you know, but, uh, but, but I found a lot of problems with a lot of men. They were going through a lot of uh, difficult times through emotions and which is true, Shane. What we're going to do now is uh, we're just going to go for a little... Marry the... Uh, the Shane? Shane? The... Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, we, yeah I'm, here. I'm just going to go for a little break. Can you hear me? I'm going to keep you on the line and then when we come back from the break, we're going to carry on, yeah? Yes, of course. 
course, yeah. Okay, right, guys, we're just going to go for a quick break. And that was Sister Shaheen. Some very deep conversations there. And join us again after the break where we're going to continue with the deep conversations and with the roller coaster of Shaheen's life. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Uh, it's your brother Nasim Khan back again uh, in the limelight with uh, Sister Shaheen. Before we go to Sister Shaheen, we just had a very, very in-depth conversation there because when people look at artists, you look at artists as being uh, just an artist, but there's other things behind an artist, how artist deals with people, how people come and talk to the artist, especially being Muslim, and there's so many other things going on. So I'm just going to bring Shaheen's sister back in. Assalamu alaikum, Shaheen. Salam, my dear. Yeah, welcome back. So we were touching upon where the brother actually spoke to you and he was trying to leave Islam at that time. And I, I think personally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent you as a wasila at that time to obviously speak to him and get him back into... Aww. So... Oh, because it was very strange, to see. Yeah. He had, he had disappeared. And I think these sort of situations, this is only a little sort of mere example, but these yeah. sort of situations happen a lot to me to my, to my troubles. Yeah. I, I, um, you know, uh, that there are brothers who have basically been scholars, or um, they have they have mastered uh, the holy, you know, may Allah all, they have mastered the holy book, and then they they basically suddenly I meet up with someone, someone or the other, they have been very deep conversations, and we're talking about imam and life and their yeah. relationships and yeah. you know, things that they want out of life and the perception or how other people within their family perceive them, etc. Um, you know, because they are they are confined to a situation where they have to keep reciting or keep following X, Y, so many yeah. times, and they feel like, well, you know, I haven't received, I haven't achieved this lot yeah. of mine, so maybe I, I can't. Uh, there's something not uh, in this world. So I think these kind of situations. Um, to me, and I think I started studying the Holy Book, uh, looking at things which were very important. I could relay a message to the youngsters, to yeah. two men who are suffering, uh, and um, I got in them. And Alhamdulillah, there, there are guys who have been non believers as well. Um, mm. They started reading, Alhamdulillah, they, they started reading um, uh, books on faith. They started, uh, uh, you know, so there have been some guys who could uh, recite the Ayat al-Kursi who, who yeah. are actually Muslim, but they, they were just basically praying, but they wouldn't understand that I guided them towards that, and I guided them towards Surah uh, Al-Fatiha. The yeah. course, little things like saying, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, whatever, just connecting the, uh, them directly to Almighty God. And I told them that I think the most important thing for you is that this faith, it is between you and Almighty God, not because another man is uh, is uh, trying to inflict uh, negativity on you or trying to ca cause fitna, uh, you know, and remove you. Because obviously there are there are forces out there where where sometimes you know someone do so many good things that things are not working out for that person. Yeah, yeah. That's so disheartened. And people are trying and trying and trying, but then all the brothers themselves, all the sisters, or Whatever they are, they are sometimes um, uh, criticizing them for it. You know, so these emotions, and this is so important to see, this is what he suffer for mental health depression. Absolutely. Very important. Absolutely. You would not even realize it, Mr. Kim, but talk, talking to an individual, you think he's fine, and then within two or three weeks of me meeting that person, you think, why did he say what 
what he did. Now, why did he behave yeah. in that uh, manner? I thought he was normal. But they, there are issues going on, my dear. And we as individuals are responsible. We, we are responsible. Because we are inflicting these sort of measures of always judging another human being, whether they are in Western clothes, whether they are in hijab, whether, you know, making pathetic comments or, or, on situation. And then the person goes home, is feeling depressed, has nobody to talk to, because as you, you know, as the Kayamat signs are going to be shown, people, People are going to start becoming very disorientated. Conversations are going to end. Um, who are basically going to tell the truth? They will be lying, and there will be loads of judgments which are going to come through. So I think for us, it is important for us to take important, uh, very important sort of measures in our life right now as dilemma because people have lost jobs, they have lost iman, they have lost um, families uh, due to famine, due to all these things that is happening. There, there are job losses. So your morals are always being questioned by always like I have. I'm big. I've got the best stuff. I've, I've done X, Y, Z in my life. None of it matters. Absolutely, None of it matters. absolutely. Nothing because matters. as you know, bro, you know we are going to go empty-handed anyway. Yes. You know. So I I just believe um, seeing that what I had experienced, and I feel so sad about it. It, it, it is something that really touches my heart that I have met the most beautiful brothers, and I'm telling you this honestly from my soul, that I have met the most beautiful brothers in my trip, in, in my, um, uh, just from my journey, when, when I'm dealing with my projects, with, with, uh, with just, just several, several things. And they, they, because of what they relay back to me, it becomes a worry for me. I do worry for them, and I become very protective towards them. And it could be an atheist, it could be a religious person, it could be any anybody. Yeah. Um, and yes, it has made me very strong, and it has made me, uh, I, I'm in control of myself, I'm in control of my imam, because it's very important, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very tight with my thinking, because I feel if I loosen myself up, somebody, somebody is going to target me, because they believe that I, they, can, they can inform me about any, anything what they want because of their belief, and I would turn into that, but I, I can't. Because Allah subhanahu wa has given me that sort of um, rahma, that um, alhamdulillah, that I've been able to, um, you know, guide some of the people in the most slightest of, of manner. Not in a very way that, uh, you know, I, and yes, there are some people, alhamdulillah, who have also taken the shahada. You know, and I don't like talking about it, but yes, it has happened. You know, alhamdulillah, I have, uh, you know, I've been in that position to do that. And uh, the brothers have been, in, you know, I had to take them to the brothers. It's been <laughs> my journey in life, um, Nassim, which I'm very open to you about. Yeah. It's, of course, we talk about music, but my journey in life has been so much amazing in a sense that these little experiences that have happened, uh, you know, uh, means a lot to me. And I believe this is the rational no, and is, the from Allah. Absolutely, but this and is... And I don't have to be perfect for any man. Shaheen, no, no, this is... <laughs> I no, this is to. this you is know, what I'm saying. I, yeah, if Allah Kareem. believes likes something good of mine, then Alhamdulillah, then I'm fine. Shaheen, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. This is this yeah, is. Can hear you. Yeah. Uh, this is what I'm trying to say is that. My show is not just about music or stuff. Yes, I get artists on, but I bring the other side out of the artists, which I've done with you yourself today and many other artists, because Marshall, you're, yeah. not, you're not just a singer, a writer, a producer, a performer. Because what I tend to do is uh, I tend yeah. to bring uh, the artists on the show who can actually talk about their experiences and what they've done. And these are very, very good experiences that you've had where... Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you, has chosen you to be yeah, at the I'm forefront of some people and help them. People where many these days wouldn't even do that, or an artist wouldn't even do that. So the whole interview so far has been based on your yeah. life, who you are, what you've done, and how you helped our Muslim brothers and sisters out there. Yeah. Now let's go on to the next part, where obviously you collaborated with Keith, who's not with us anymore from Prodigy. How did that come about? Oh my God. Heat subject is very emotional. Um, did, what, sorry, what did you? Oh, how did I come out? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I didn't. I hear that. How, how, how did you? Did you repeat that again? How, how did you collaborate with Keith, who's not here with us anymore, from Prodigy? How did that come about? Oh yes, with the, the Prodigy. Okay, Mr. Almighty God, uh, you know, bless his soul. Uh, very important person in my life and life millions of there who are his fans. 
Um, I specifically was uh, approached by Excel Recordings at that time, um, and um, you know they, uh, I think it was the fundamental, um, uh, basically mentioned about uh, to um, to the prodigy, and basically then um, I received a call. I was recording in a, a book with Kedar Records and Pujit Pamara. We all know him, um, wonderful percussionist, and so I was with Kedar Records and just released an album called Destiny, and right. so. Um, I um, called up to the studio and, uh, you know, uh, Akinawa said, you've got to listen to her, you've got to listen to her, yeah. her voice. And then basically, um, I sent a demo, I sent a demo over. And obviously, my, my tracks, all that, because I, I was very interested in sort of um, working on different sort of chants and I to uh, fuse lots of different yeah, kinds yeah. of stuff, etc. Yeah. On, on dance tracks, um, that's the sort of demo I sort of sent over. And... Uh, It was really good because the very next day, I'm keeping me a chant, which I had sort of created, but it was on a lot of Hanadaga, and basically the chant was very long, you know? Yeah. And um, and I was hoping to release uh, that track, uh, and anyway, send the track over, and uh, yeah, and then Lee heard it, he fell in love with it, and I was in the studio, and then um, basically they sent me uh, a demo of, um, basically, of music, um, it was called that time changed my pitch up, and yeah. uh, then I basically said to them that, look, I'm going to create something, and if you like the chance you keep it, you know, I, I said to him, if you like the chance you keep it, if you don't, then you basically uh, remove it, yeah. and he said, okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I, you know, used to work on the pair of rods and stuff and all of that, then basically I sort of created some something along with that and uh yeah i went back into the studio and teeth was there so beautiful and so so beautiful at the uh you know and um he was there and liam was there and then i recorded the chant and he sort of said it literally at that time it's going to be a big picture that's what he said you know it's going to be a big hit and uh this is amazing and uh he was literally uh, in, in front of me, and uh, Luke was really beautiful as well, and he was mesmerized by the whole thing that was going <laughs> on, you know. So, um, yeah, so then after that, it became history and became one of the biggest dance tracks, controversial dance tracks in the world. And I received um, the, the latest I received a triple platinum disc, and uh, from the management company, you know, as a, a beautiful management company, and obviously, my champion would be. Um, original manager, who was the main uh, manager for uh, the first manager, sorry for yeah. um, for the prodigy. He passed away as well, so that was very painful because he, he was yeah. adorable and he he had so much respect for me. You know, um, absolutely amazing guy. So uh, he passed away. Then we had uh, we had the new manager as well, really lovely as well. So basically, yeah, really great management. The uh, you know as a home and. Um, I recorded after, if I can say this, am I allowed to say this? Is it okay to say it? The name of the track? Uh, it's up to you, yeah. No. So the track <laughs> was called, <laughs> it's called Smack and then M-B-U. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll put it that way. Yeah, so yeah. that track, <laughs> so that track, yeah. which is, you know, I'm, I'm only doing the vocals there, right? So I'm yeah. not in the video. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I know. Yeah. So it was very controversial. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, chat, the chant uh, became huge internationally and millions were singing to the chant and it, it, it literally gave me goosebumps. Today even I've, I've met some of the fans as well and it's very emotional to meet them because some of them have grown up with that chant and when they sort of meet me, some of yeah. them are literally in tears to see, you know, and they're yeah. the most beautiful human beings. I love them. Yeah. I adore them. And um, so I had, um, I just met them last um, a few years ago, just yeah. before Keith passed away. And and um, you know, so it's been it's been very emotional, um, whole sort of uh, whole sort of thing. But I recorded them another track uh, called uh, "Get Up, Get Off," which was yeah. on the album "All Without Numbers," uh, "All Without yeah. Guns," uh, "All Without Numbers," "Never Out Guns." Sorry, and uh, "Part of the Land" was the biggest one. You know, um, yeah. it sold like over thirty million records, or etc. Uh, worldwide, so it's huge. So it's you know, and it's such a great collaboration. Um, yeah. uh, you know, with the legendary band like uh, the prodigy and yeah. uh, i love the sound and i love uh pounding sounds you know just uh, with all the break beats and all etc yeah. all of that you know so um 
Yeah, so I just want to. I just, <laughs> you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, I've been really blessed. Yeah, I just want to yeah. say, I just want to say on that, Shaheen. Obviously, we've hit the half an hour slot, and so far we've been uh, discussing very, very good situations. I mean, uh, that song that you did with Prodigy, no. actually, actually, yeah, actually featured on the movie, yeah. guys. Charlie's Angels and Shaheen's vocal. Now, when Shaheen is talking about the chant, what we what the chant means is the alap. So the alap that she did on that track was featured. Uh, with that track in the movie Charlie's Angels too, um, Shane. Before we go, yeah, be, before before we go, I just wanna. Obviously, normally I finish my show in about half an hour, twenty five minutes, but I wanna prolong this show a little bit because I wanna talk about your experience in India because you're in India at this moment in time and you were there just before the pandemic started. Yeah. What have you seen with the people in India, yeah. the poor people in India? What have you seen and what have the what have, what is the uh, media portraying and what have you seen yourself? I think, to be very honest with you, I love I, uh, India is a great nation. I love India. Um, with regards to the poor people, the destitute, you know, it's been very painful because you know because of the uh, flood, etc. People have suffered immensely here, and it happens every year. But um, you know, there have been you know, sometimes when I when I've been feeding people, or I've been I've been Alhamdulillah with Allah Rahman, just to be the green coats and etc. etc. Lots of things have been going on. Um, while all this has been uh, going on with the charitable stuff, um, it's very painful to see them uh, moan to you about the situation, about their lives, you know, about not having homes and. One of the things which I found um, absolutely dreadful is that when you, uh, you know, when you go to the slums, uh, slum area, um, when, when I went there the very first time, um, you know, the roofs, the tin roofs that they have, uh, they've been blown away by the wind. Mm. And I think it's very important for the government to take care of the situations, uh, uh, you know, straight away. But then, you know, uh, the people who are begging, literally, they are crying uh, when they, when they approach you because, you know, and it's very, very disturbing. The scene yeah, because yeah. I've gone through it, so I can't so, sort of start uh, weeping right now about it. But it is very painful, and I think um, there has been because of the COVID nineteen situation, there have been job losses. Um, there was a brother that basically said to me the other day, uh, uh, "Hey, um, Didi, you know, I bought a new clothes, I bought a new shoes, I bought a new bag, because you know, I have a bag for my bag." So it's very painful. I don't have any have an ID. A lot of people actually gone back to their homes to the villages, which is really great for them. But then, obviously, um, India has sort of government-wise, they have taken care. There have been over 1 million, 1.75 million cases right now, but I think yeah. um, 400, uh, I, I don't know how many people have sort of uh, died right now. I think 14, 15,000 people uh, have been passed away oh, due to it. And um, it, is, it is very severe. But uh, especially here in Mumbai, in the in the area that here, uh, the time as well as it's a much of a better posh sort of area. Good, you know, people people from good areas actually um, live here. Uh, good family, sorry. And um, so my dad is just gone right now. So so yeah, basically, um, basically what I have seen um, uh, from them, yes, that there's been a lot of suffering. Um, the Mohindo same thing, there isn't, uh, you know, people sort of sometimes portray negative images about them. Everybody's united in here on the team. I want to make this very, very clear. Yeah. People are uh, extremely emotional about it. They support each other. They're united. There isn't this hate factor. Yes, there might be some areas that might uh, instigate uh, negative situations because there, there is this organization. And this is what I have felt, that if, if the government does not into control, um, not even the government, maybe there are some that take the disorganization um, into control, then there would be blames that are basically um, thrown on individual groups, etc. And yeah. our brothers, etc., even our Muslim brothers, alhamdulillah, they're all, mashallah, so um, loving in here. They all, uh, you know, have, they, they work with their Hindu friends, they are going to uh, they attend the hospital, everyone's together in the scene, you know? Yeah, so the, um, what the media portrays, there are some media, maybe, you see, I can't talk for the media because I've not been in touch with uh, hardly any of them because of the whole COVID-19 situation. But sometimes when you need, read negative stuff, be careful, be very careful, because it condemns, it, it makes the nation look very stupid. Let's make it yeah. very clear. 
And the nation and the people are not stupid. They are loving, they are courteous, they actually care for others. They, when, for example, let's say Muslim Brothers TV Limited, there are thousands of Hindus, hundreds of Hindus who could stand for the rights of the Muslim Brother. And the same happens when a Muslim Brother, is be, uh, uh, a Hindu Brother is being offended, these hundreds and thousands of Muslim Brothers will go, why? Because they don't look at religion. They look at love, they look at peace, they've been brought up together. And India is a multicultural country. You have uh, you have uh, temples, you have mosques, you have everybody is together, and everybody. Yeah. And uh, something very important, uh, Nasim. They all, all of them, they, most of them, all of them believe in Almighty God. So Remember they, that yeah. because I have converted them. Yeah. I have conversed with these individuals. So when anybody tries to sort of condemn an individual or put them down. I feel pain in my heart. Why? Because I've spoken to the poor people. I have walked with them. I, I know that there are Hindu women that will suddenly walk around and they will say, Rabmin Jidiyahana. And she laid in her hand. And yeah. she has nothing. And Look yet she said, Rabmin Jidiyahana. Yeah. So, ye jo mentality hai, agar hum log sab achhe tarikhe se apne dimaak me laal se, ki hamara nation united hai, then after that, all these negative things that people are trying to sort of portray in the media, yes, there are groups that have caused issues. But you've also got to understand that there are people who probably are financially broken. They, are, they, they, they do not have finances in their hands. Yeah. So maybe there are people who probably pay them. Because we don't know anything who is doing what. So you can't blame uh, a certain group for it. You can't blame this is all... This, all the negativity which is instigated and, uh, you know, which, which did affect me because when I first came here, I think the first, after this, my single job was released, a uh, year later, all these things started happening and I'm thinking, it's just my friends, suddenly, who are my fans, suddenly um, uh, um, started sending me these weird messages, uh, oh, but you're supporting this, you're supporting that. I said, I'm not supporting anything. The problem is there's disorganization. Yeah, this yeah. is that word. This organization, this organization has created havoc. Yeah. It does in England as well. You know, some people are told to wear masks in some departments and other people are told not to wear a mask. Now what's going to happen in there? Yeah, yeah, confusion. What's going to happen in there? Disagreement, disorganization. Do you see what I'm trying to say? So yeah. this logic has to be understood in the scene. We cannot build hatred for a nation and the people. It's, it's not the civilians' fault. It's not their fault. It's the people who try to portray these negative uh, images of these poor people of this country. And poor people have a heart. They are the most loving and the most intelligent of beings I have come across. I tell you the team, I've had the best of conversations with these uh, uh, poor people than I have had with middle class people. I make it go. very damn clear. I've had more comfort more love from the poor people who have literally ran behind me, sister, sister, the department, and they are in the middle of the world. This is, this is, this is true. You know, 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 So, you know, um, I don't, I, I don't get involved in hate. I do not get involved in the negative things which I hear because it's too much. And sometimes it affects, for example, someone who hasn't visited India, they're going to have a completely negative uh, image of India. Somebody who hasn't gone yeah. to Bangladesh, somebody who hasn't gone to Pakistan. If you start to wrong things about a country, unless and until you've set foot in that country, you cannot talk about the country. It's better that you do not say anything about it. Absolutely. You know, you've got to feel, you've got to feel for the people of the country. And it, it's very, very important. And I feel this is, this is my mother's land. And, you know, and I feel for the people of this country, you know, and I, um, and, the, and you know, the, I'll tell you uh, the other thing as well is that I went, in, there were music concerts which was being happening, uh, which happened here. And, um, Marshall, they were saying, you know, the boys were singing, they were uh, Punjabi brothers. Oh, what voices. They were actually playing, um, uh, they were Pakistani songs of Ghulam, uh, you know, Ghulam yeah. Sahab. You yeah. just imagine, you know. So if, 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 if this is the love and affection that we are experiencing as individuals, so where is all the negative thoughts coming from? What, what are they trying to portray? And yes, there have been issues, yes, there have been so many issues in different parts um, or cities of India, which I'm very aware of, you know? Yeah. Um, but then again, you know, it, with such a, 
you know, with such a huge population, it's very, very difficult to sometimes control a certain uh, sect or a certain group. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, 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 they don't have enough, uh, in, enough um, you know, people yeah. to uh, sort of control it all. You see what I mean? Or organizations, I guess. Well, I'm just going to yeah. say, wow, Shane, wow, you know, the other side of you I've actually bought out. <laughs> What I singer? Do, I do not want to. You have to come across like a history teacher, my dear. <laughs> you, you are a singer. I'm sorry, you are not a singer to me. You have just spoke for the people of India. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, okay, Shane. I just want to say. I just want to say. You know, whenever I travel, the team, yeah. I travel to the country. A lot of love and affection for the people. See? Absolutely. This is how I walk my path, my dear. I, I just want to oh, say for the country and for the people. I just want to say, Shaheem, uh, says Jazakallah for coming on my show. Uh, Jazakallah for highlighting so the issues uh, to the people, and I think you've highlighted a lot of issues there, which are gone with nothing to do with music. It's to do with uh, insan, insaniyat, <laughs> love, and I think it's you fantastic. Can you, you, you just need to Google me. You just need to Google me exactly. No, 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 all people. the information you want on your my new single, by the way, I'm a new single out. And it's by, it's called Sapphire with Dee Montero. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think you need to get me back to support my music. No, no, people, yes. people, <laughs> no, no, people know who, you, obviously they know who you are, but now people actually know what you feel and what you've done and about your past and what you're seeing now. And that's what I like to bring out on my show, hence in the limelight. So people have seen you, hold on a second, Shaheen's supposed to be a singer, but wow, some of the stuff that she's come out with today is unbelievable. You know, so this is what we need to show the people that at the end of the day, you know, there's other other things as well. But before you go, Shaheen, I just want you to do a few lines for a Sufi song that you did, just a few lines, and then we'll wrap it up. Oh my God! No, I can't. I, oh, the uh, scene. I won't be able to because my vocal. I have a really bad. Uh, I don't have a soul throat, but it's not very good. But even even if it's even if it's even if it's one even if it's even if it's one. Don't make us a movie. Just do one alarm then. One little alarm for half a second. I've got you on the point now. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to now. <laughs> it's live. I won't. No, it will crack. The uh, scene will literally crack. I'm telling you, I'm feeling it with crack. It won't work. Okay. I have to do it some other day. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, thank oh, you. Sorry, bro. I truly apologize for it. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you very much for giving us your time. Obviously, you know, all the way in India and we're in the UK. I really, really appreciate your time. And, thank uh, you. In inshallah, hope thank hopefully you when you're back here, welcome. when you're back here, good luck with everything. We'll hopefully we'll catch up in person. Okay, Shaheen, Allah is take care, yeah? Inshallah. Allah Hafiz, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. No problem, Allah Hafiz, Allah Hafiz. Wow, and there you have it guys, a very, very in-depth interview there with uh, Sister Shaheen Badr, all the way from India. Uh, obviously, you know of herself as an artist. Yep, she's an artist, she's a music artist, she's done a lot of chants, and she's featured in Prodigy, and the song actually got featured in uh, Charlie's Angels, and she's done a lot of music. She's also featured in the movie called uh, Yudha as well. So th there's, a, there's a lot been going on, a lot been going on, and all I want to say is to Shaheen herself that thank you very much you know, for coming on the show, giving us time. But she's highlighted a lot of things like never judge anybody, Islam is the key, you know, be yourself, be human and just do what, it, what you got to do and it's between you and Allah. So I just want to say thank you everybody for tuning in to In The Limelight and I'll have another